have you ever faced a situation where a seemingly insignificant decision led to unexpected, far-reaching consequences? Consider a moment in a quiet library where a single whispered conversation unintentionally disrupts the concentrated silence, affecting everyone's ability to focus. This scenario mirrors how our actions and attitudes can impact our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Today, I am going to explore our relationship with the Holy Spirit, specifically looking at some actions and attitudes that should be avoided. We will consider the profound importance of maintaining a respectful and nurturing relationship with the Holy Spirit. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, Psalm 20 verse 7 reminds us some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Trusting in God involves respecting His presence within us, which is embodied by the Holy Spirit. Let us explore five ways in which our everyday actions can either honor or offend this divine presence. Number one, grieving the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, have you ever considered what it means to grieve the Holy Spirit? The idea of causing grief to our divine comforter may seem daunting, yet Scripture provides clear warnings about this very issue. In Ephesians 4 verse 30, we are admonished and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Just as harsh words can wound the hearts of those we love, our actions and attitudes can deeply affect the Holy Spirit. Grieving the Spirit can occur through actions such as harboring bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, or loud disputes, and evil speaking among ourselves. Each of these not only disrupts our own spiritual peace, but also that of our spiritual community. So why should this matter to us? It matters because the Holy Spirit is not just a power or a force. He is a person who desires a relationship with us. When we grieve the Holy Spirit, we are, in essence, damaging the intimacy we share with God. Imagine the quietness of a trust-filled relationship replaced by the noise of conflict and misunderstanding. Just as trust in a relationship builds a comforting silence that nurtures love and understanding, so does a pure and obedient heart foster a deeper communion with the Holy Spirit. How then can we avoid grieving the Holy Spirit? It begins with the heart, cultivating attributes such as kindness, Tenderheartedness and forgiveness is paramount as we align our actions with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, temperance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We create an environment where the Holy Spirit can freely work in and through us. Furthermore, our speech plays a crucial role. The words we speak can either soothe or burn. By choosing words that uplift and heal, we honor the Holy Spirit's presence. It's about embracing a lifestyle of worship and reverence towards God in all aspects of our lives. By doing so, we ensure that our lives are a continuous offering, pleasing and acceptable to Him. In addition, Staying sensitive to the Holy Spirit's guidance in our daily lives invites His presence more profoundly. It's like tuning into a frequency. The clearer the channel, the better the reception. By maintaining a clean heart and a willing spirit, we keep our spiritual ears open to His whispers and promptings. One profound way to nurture this relationship is through regular heartfelt prayer. 
by engaging in prayer. Not as a ritual, but as a genuine conversation with God, it allows us to express our deepest regrets, desires, and thankfulness. This openness prepares the way for healing and strengthens our sensitivity to the Spirit's movements, preventing grief and fostering a joyful communion. My friends, regular reading and meditation on God's Word play a critical role in aligning our hearts with the Holy Spirit's desires. Remember, the Scriptures are not just historical documents. They are the living, breathing words of God that have the power to transform our hearts and renew our minds. As we immerse ourselves in the Bible, the Holy Spirit helps us understand and apply these truths to our lives, shaping us to be more like Christ. Each of these practices invites the Holy Spirit's transformative work in our lives ensuring that our actions and attitudes reflect His holy presence and do not cause grief. Number two, quenching the Holy Spirit. My friends, let us now explore what it means to quench the Holy Spirit, a concept that is vitally important, yet often overlooked, or sometimes even confused, with grieving the Holy Spirit. The scripture simply tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19, Do not quench the Spirit. This directive points us to the idea of extinguishing or suppressing the Holy Spirit's influence in our lives. Just as water extinguishes fire, certain behaviors can dampen the Spirit's fiery presence within us. Quenching the Holy Spirit can occur when we ignore or resist His guidance, when we are disobedient to the promptings that call us towards righteousness, it is like turning our backs on a wise advisor, choosing instead to follow our own flawed instincts or the misleading advice of others. This resistance can stifle the spiritual gifts he intends to develop in us, gifts intended for the edification and building up of the church. Consider that the Holy Spirit is the source of our spiritual vitality and power. He offers us wisdom, understanding, and strength to overcome life's challenges. When we quench the Spirit, we deny ourselves these divine resources, making our spiritual journey more difficult and less fruitful. To avoid quenching the Holy Spirit, we must cultivate an environment where He can thrive. This involves continuous prayer, where we not only speak to God, but also listen allowing the Holy Spirit to direct our thoughts and actions. It requires an openness to the Spirit's influence, a willingness to be led, even when His guidance might challenge our comfort zones or personal desires. As Ephesians 6, verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. This scripture underscores the importance of remaining vigilant in our spiritual walk, actively engaging with the Holy Spirit through prayer. Furthermore, embracing the gifts of the Holy Spirit is crucial. Whether these gifts are prophetic insights, words of wisdom, discernment, or others, Accepting and nurturing these gifts can significantly enhance our spiritual effectiveness. By encouraging the functioning of these gifts, we affirm the Holy Spirit's active role in our lives. Another important aspect is obedience. The Holy Spirit often prompts us to act in ways that require faith and courage. These actions might include speaking truth in challenging situations, offering forgiveness to those who have wronged us or stepping out in faith to fulfill God's call. Each act of obedience fuels the flame of the Spirit within us, while disobedience can dampen His work. Regular self-examination and repentance are also vital in keeping the Holy Spirit's fire burning brightly. 
By examining our hearts and lives in the light of God's Word, we can identify and confess areas where we have resisted or ignored the Spirit. This honest self-assessment helps us to realign with God's purposes and re-energizes the Spirit's presence in our lives. Additionally, nurturing a spirit of gratitude can keep the Holy Spirit's fire alive. My friends, recognizing and appreciating God's gifts and blessings, even in small measures, cultivates a positive, faith-filled environment that honors the Spirit. Gratitude turns our focus away from our shortcomings and towards God's generosity, which fuels our spiritual zeal. Each of these steps not only prevents us from quenching the spirit, but also promotes a dynamic, empowered spiritual life that is responsive to promptings of the Holy Spirit and equipped to fulfill God's kingdom purposes. Number three, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, we now turn to a particularly sobering topic blaspheming the Holy Spirit. This term refers to a grave sin that Jesus himself described with great seriousness. Jesus warns us in Mark 3, verse 29, saying, But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. In essence, Jesus was warning that rejecting Slandering or speaking against the Holy Spirit is an unforgivable sin. The context in Mark 3 is that Jesus had been performing miracles and casting out demons by the power of the Holy Spirit. However, the Pharisees accused him of doing this by the power of Beelzebub, which refers to Satan. In other words, they were attributing the good and holy works of the Spirit to the devil Instead, this revealed the hardness and corruption of their hearts. My friends, this is a very serious offense. By extension, blaspheming the Holy Spirit involves a persistent, unrepentant rejection of the Spirit's work in revealing the truth about Jesus and drawing people to put their faith in Him for salvation. It attacks the very testimony of God's work through His Holy Spirit. When the miraculous works of the Holy Spirit are dismissed as the acts of demonic forces, it not only shows a hardened heart, but also a direct opposition to God's active presence in the world. This sin reflects a state of heart that is so hardened by disbelief and rebellion that it cannot be brought to repentance through the usual means of grace. So in warning against this unpardonable sin, Jesus was underlining the vital importance of being receptive to the Holy Spirit's guidance and yielding to His influence, rather than willfully rejecting Him. Essentially, it's a solemn call to respond in faith to Jesus while the opportunity is available rather than persisting in rebellious unbelief to the point of no return. Understanding the gravity of this sin helps us to appreciate the sanctity with which we must treat the Holy Spirit's work in our lives and in the world. It is crucial that we recognize and affirm the Holy Spirit's actions as divine and righteous, not only to avoid blaspheming, but also to foster a respectful and honoring attitude towards the Spirit of God. How then can we guard ourselves against blaspheming the Holy Spirit? It begins with fostering a correct understanding of who the Holy Spirit is and acknowledging His divine actions. Regular study of Scripture, prayer, and communion with other believers can help us gain a deeper appreciation and correct knowledge of the Holy Spirit's role in our lives and in the world. Additionally, Maintaining a humble and teachable spirit is essential. Being open to correction and willing to adjust our understanding based on biblical truths helps prevent the development of false beliefs or misunderstandings about the nature of the Holy Spirit. 
A heart that is soft and responsive to God's word is less likely to fall into the grievous error of misattributing the Spirit's work. As James 4, verse 6 says, But he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. This scripture emphasizes the value of humility in our spiritual life, especially in how we approach learning and responding to God's word, which is crucial for a correct understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is also vital to cultivate a deep personal relationship with the Holy Spirit by engaging daily with the Holy Spirit through prayer, meditation, and obedience, we grow more attuned to His presence and workings. This personal connection makes it less likely for us to misunderstand or misrepresent His actions. Furthermore, a spirit of reverence and awe towards God and His works can safeguard us when we approach God's acts with reverence Recognizing them as holy and beyond our full understanding, we maintain the proper humility that prevents blasphemous thoughts. My friends, praying for discernment and wisdom from the Holy Spirit is crucial as we seek His guidance in understanding spiritual matters. He can enlighten our minds and hearts, steering us away from any thoughts or attitudes that could lead to blasphemy. By taking these steps, we not only protect ourselves from committing this grave sin, but also enhance our relationship with the Holy Spirit, ensuring that our lives reflect His truth and grace. Number four, lying to the Holy Spirit. Let us now consider the serious matter of lying to the Holy Spirit. This concept is vividly illustrated in the story of Ananias and Sapphira, as recorded in Acts 5, verses 3 to 4. Here, Peter confronts Ananias, asking, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? The consequences they faced for this deceit were severe and immediate. Ananias and Sapphira died instantly as a result of their deceit, demonstrating the seriousness with which God views dishonesty towards the Holy Spirit. Understand that lying to the Holy Spirit represents a breach of trust and a fundamental disrespect for God's omnipresence and omniscience. The Holy Spirit, who dwells within us as believers, is privy to all our thoughts and intentions. When we lie to the Spirit, we are essentially attempting to deceive God Himself, showing a lack of fear and reverence for His divine presence. To avoid lying to the Holy Spirit, we must first cultivate a heart of transparency and truthfulness. This starts with being honest to ourselves, acknowledging our true thoughts and motives before God. In doing so, we align ourselves with the spirit of truth, allowing no room for deceit or deception in our relationship with Him. Furthermore, embracing integrity in all our dealings is crucial. Integrity involves consistency of actions, values, methods, measures, principles, expectations, and outcomes. As we practice integrity, it becomes second nature to be honest in all situations, not just when it is convenient or when we are likely to be caught. Another key aspect is the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, according to Proverbs 9, verse 10. A healthy reverence for God and His commands will deter us from attempting to deceive Him or others. This fear is not about being afraid, but having a profound respect for God's power and justice which influences our actions and choices. It is also important to maintain open communication with God through prayer. 
Regular prayer helps us to keep our consciences clear and our intentions pure. It is a time to confess our shortcomings and seek forgiveness, which helps prevent deceitful tendencies from taking root in our hearts. Regular reflection on the consequences of our actions, as seen in the story of Ananias and Sapphira, can also reinforce the importance of honesty, understanding the potential spiritual and relational impacts of dishonesty can motivate us to choose truthfulness. My friends, seeking the fruit of the Spirit, which includes goodness and faithfulness, can transform our inner character. As Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 describes, these virtues are part of the Holy Spirit's transformative work in us. By allowing the Spirit to cultivate these qualities in us, we become people who naturally uphold truth and transparency in our dealings. By adhering to these principles, we honor the Holy Spirit with our truthfulness, ensuring our actions and words are in alignment with His divine nature. And number five, testing the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, let us now consider the peril of testing the Holy Spirit, a warning that beckons us to reflect deeply on our attitude towards divine guidance. Testing the Holy Spirit involves challenging His authority or doubting His power, much like the Israelites did in the wilderness when they repeatedly challenged God's guidance and provisions. Also, in Acts 5 verse 9, we find Peter confronting Sapphira with the question, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? And my friends, let us not confuse this testing of the Holy Spirit with the directive found in 1 John 4 verse 1, which instructs us to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Understand that the directive in Acts 5 warns against challenging or deceiving the Holy Spirit's presence and authority, while 1 John 4 encourages discernment to distinguish between true and false spiritual influences. This attitude reflects a profound disbelief or lack of trust, and it undermines the very foundation of our relationship with God. It is dangerous to test the Holy Spirit because such an attitude reveals a heart that is not fully convinced of God's sovereignty or faithfulness. Testing the Spirit can stem from a lack of faith where one requires constant signs and wonders to believe in God's actions or promises. This reflects a deeper spiritual immaturity where Trust in God is contingent upon visible and immediate proofs rather than steadfast faith. To avoid testing the Holy Spirit, we must cultivate a deep and abiding faith in God. This faith accepts God's sovereignty and His perfect timing without demanding constant supernatural interventions to validate our beliefs. It is a trust that rests on the character of God as revealed in Scripture and through the personal relationship we develop with Him through prayer and meditation. My friends, understanding and respecting God's sovereignty is crucial. Recognizing that God's ways and thoughts are higher than ours, as Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9 tells us, helps us accept His decisions and the timing of His actions without doubting or challenging His wisdom. Developing patience is also essential in not testing the Holy Spirit. Patience allows us to wait on God's timing without becoming restless or demanding. It helps us to endure challenging situations with a spirit of perseverance, trusting that God is working out His purpose even when the outcomes are not immediately visible. Another key aspect is humility. A humble heart does not demand signs from God to prove Himself, but rather submits to God's will, acknowledging that our understanding is limited and that His understanding is infinite. Humility aligns our perspective with God's perspective, fostering a deeper sense of trust and reliance on Him. 
practicing obedience also plays a significant part in not testing the Holy Spirit. When we obey God's commands and follow His lead, even when it's challenging or when we don't fully understand the reasons, we demonstrate our trust in His guidance. So, obedience strengthens our faith and deepens our relationship with God. Engaging in regular spiritual disciplines such as fasting, prayer, worship, and Bible study can also fortify our spirits against the temptation to test the Holy Spirit. These practices help refine our spiritual focus and enhance our ability to discern God's presence and action in our lives. Also, being thankful for past blessings and answered prayers can reinforce our faith and trust in God. Remembering how God has previously worked in our lives reminds us of His faithfulness and power, reducing our inclination to test His Spirit. By embracing these practices, we foster a relationship with the Holy Spirit that is characterized by faith, respect, and obedience, rather than doubt and testing. My friends, as we seek to understand how to honor the Holy Spirit, let us commit to nurturing a relationship with Him that is built on trust, reverence, and love. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Sovereign Lord, I praise you and exalt your holy name above all else. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who reigns forever in unmatched majesty and power. Your ways are perfect. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, deserving of all honor and adoration. Lord, I thank you for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the lives of my loved ones. I am grateful for your mercy and grace that renew me each day. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who guides, comforts, and empowers me. In your abundant love, you have provided me with more than I could ever deserve. Merciful Father, I come before you seeking forgiveness for my sins and for the times I have grieved or quenched the Holy Spirit through my actions and inactions. Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, help me also to forgive others as you have forgiven me, releasing any bitterness or grudge that may hinder my walk with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke any attempts by the enemy to diminish your work in my life. I bind every spirit of deception, conflict, and disobedience that seeks to keep me from your truth. Empower me to live in full alignment with your will, being responsive to the Holy Spirit's guidance at every turn. Lord, I seek your blessings over my life and the lives of those I hold dear. Pour out your favor upon us, bless our endeavors, and increase our territories. May your hand be with us and keep us from evil. Bless us with abundance so that we may be a blessing to others. And let your peace, which surpasses all understanding, Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Jehovah Rapha, I pray for health in our bodies, minds, and spirits. Heal any sickness, mend any brokenness, and rejuvenate any weariness we face. Restore our strength as the eagles, and renew our vitality, so we may walk in your ways and fulfill the plans you have for us. Lord, protect us from the snares of the enemy and from all harm. 
Shield us under the shadow of your wings and lead us away from temptation. Be our refuge and fortress in times of trouble. Lord, keep us safe from all physical dangers and spiritual attacks. Guard our coming in and our going out, today and forevermore. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, seeking your face and your strength in our lives. Let us walk in the fullness of your spirit and experience your power as we obey your commandments and follow your guidance. In the mighty name of Jesus, I claim victory over spiritual laziness. Protect us, Lord, and guide us in your perfect path. As you have promised, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. Lord, Bless us with the wisdom to recognize the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Help us to nurture this precious gift, to honor and cherish His presence. May we never grieve nor test the Spirit, but instead may we be vessels through which His power and grace flow outward. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers to learn more about your new life and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. 
We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.